You are listening to The Political Periscope, a weekly podcast brought to you by Radio WNET. Interviews on international politics, security, geopolitics, economy and more, every Thursday at 7 p.m. Today's guest of The Political Periscope is Szymon Grabarczuk, Senior Community Relations Specialist at Wikimedia Foundation. Political Periscope Pretty sure you've heard it many times. So you work for Wikipedia? Kind of. Wikipedia is a website, one of 10 most popular ones, and it's mostly written by volunteers. But there are also organizations, and it's difficult. Volunteers, but you're not a volunteer. You work. You work actually for Wikimedia Foundation. There is Wikimedia Foundation in the US. Uh, There are other associations and foundations around the world, How is it organized and can someone work for Wikipedia? Well, yes. So, as I said, I kind of work for Wikipedia because everyone who writes Wikipedia is, in principle, a volunteer. Although uh, there is perhaps fewer than 1% people who are involved in Wikipedia and its sister projects. And these people are uh, staff hired by organizations. In my case, this is Wikimedia Foundation with its headquarters in San Francisco. So as I said, websites are primarily written by volunteers. Everything which a reader reads is basically written by volunteers, people who are not paid, people who only occasionally apply for grants to make their voluntary activities a bit easier. And I am one of the most perhaps privileged ones, because I actually get paid for what I do for Wikipedia. Behind all this volunteer work, behind all those, all the articles we can read on Wikipedia, all the knowledge we can get from there, there is a structure, there is uh, some mechanism, there are servers, there is some technical support, which is, I understand, uh, paid stuff. Yes, so each language version of Wikipedia is written by its own community. Uh, These communities, in principle, don't talk to each other that much. There is a great degree of autonomy within each of those communities. And the Wikimedia Foundation for which I work runs the servers, is legally responsible for, in some, some scope, for Wikipedia. The trademarks belong to the Wikimedia Foundation. And we work on the software, we work on the technical infrastructure, we Um, give grants to smaller organizations which uh, exist all all over the world basically. Some of them are of territorial focus, some of them are of thematic focus. For example, in Poland there is uh, Wikimedia Polska, Wikimedia Wikimedia Polska, an association of volunteers. So the vast majority of its members are volunteers who write the Polish version of Wikipedia. And uh, there is, if I recall correctly, 150 such organizations. Most of them are primarily run by volunteers who are given grants from the Wikimedia Foundation. And the Wikimedia Foundation has the funds from the donors who give their money because they see the banners once a year. There are fundraising campaigns in many countries and obviously once a year the English internet is flooded by people who complain that they see that Wikipedia needs money or they are happy to give some of their money because they realize that their lives depend on the content of Wikipedia, they they realize that Wikipedia is free. Uh, So they want to give something back. And yeah, this money, one way or another, goes all the way to volunteers or to staff who work for volunteers or for leaders. Your whole adventure with Wikipedia started uh, over 10 years ago, I would say even even more, maybe maybe 15 years ago. Correct me if I'm wrong. You started also as a volunteer who just wanted to added some articles to write some articles. Yeah, so my uh, journey began 14-ish, 13 years ago. And I first was a volunteer. I started from editing 
uh, Tolkien related articles on the Polish version of Wikipedia and then I moved to some articles about law and then my hometown Lublin in Poland and uh, at some point I just took part in the recruitment process for a position, paid position at the Wikimedia Foundation and thus I became a staff member of, of the Wikimedia Foundation but it was well, several years after I became a Wikimedian. And a Wikimedian means a person who belongs to the global movement of editors and staff collectively, who either edit or work in some way for Wikipedia. There is always a question when we read the Wikipedia, is it reliable? Can we trust the articles? Can we trust the data? we find on Wikipedia who's responsible for it and we know volunteers so basically everyone can edit something can change something and uh, there's always this question is it credible yeah so I think it's first of all relative and secondly the more controversial topic the more likely it is that it is actually reliable on the larger editions of language editions of Wikipedia there are pretty good standards of quality and one of the indicators is the number of uh, footnotes or references. The more per paragraph or per sentence, yeah, per, per, per paragraphs perhaps, the, the better quality. Basically, the community of a given language version defines policies and rules about uh, good practices uh, around quality, and they control themselves. There are, of course some global checks and balances around that. All Wikipedias must follow some global rules uh, to continue being Wikipedias in the first place. And uh, yeah, the system is really decentralized. So for example, as a Polish Wikipedian, I am well familiar with uh, the policies on Polish Wikipedia. And I don't know that much about like Russian, Ukrainian, Czech versions. Speaking of those different language versions. It's also a very common to call them like Polish Wikipedia. Is it Polish Wikipedia or it's Polish language Wikipedia? That's that's a bit funny. English Wikipedia is mostly called English Wikipedia, even though everyone understands that it's not really Wikipedia belonging to the United Kingdom or England within your United Kingdom. English Wikipedia is actually primarily written in the United States, um, and yet it is called uh, English Wikipedia. And then German-speaking Wikipedians prefer to call themselves German-speaking Wikipedians because they don't uh, necessarily come from uh, Germany. It's uh, also about Austria or, or uh, Switzerland. Regarding Poland, there is a long discussion about why we are not Polish Wikipedia, we are just Polish language Wikipedia. We, as Wikipedians, needed to describe things um, neutrally and objectively, so we don't assume that our reader is a Pole, even though they speak Polish, so pretty much the likelihood that they are Poles is high, but the description needs to be neutral, so we, yeah, we, we are just Polish language Wikipedians, and we write a neutral version in Polish. So how big is Polish language Wikipedia, and uh, how does it look at the background of other Wikipedias? For a very long time, it was in the top 10 version, language versions of Wikipedias, and now it's, I think, 11th, 12th, more or less something like that. It has currently around 1.5 million articles, and compared to most language versions of Wikipedia, we have a pretty good ratio between the speakers of the language and the number of articles. Obviously, it's not the most popular uh, language version of the Central European region because uh, the Russian language version is read uh, far, far, far more often. From Russia and also from countries of the former Soviet uh, Union, 
or from um, anywhere else in the world where uh, Russian speakers are, apart from the Polish and Russian uh, version of Wikipedia, also a uh, Ukrainian uh, version of Wikipedia works pretty well. They have a large community, which is also quite effective in writing articles and maintaining them. So yeah, the versions in this region of the world are relatively good when it comes to, to statistics and, and, and ratios compared to the average version of, of Wikipedia if we assume that something like that may exist. How is the quality of Polish language Wikipedia? We know that there are many articles that are only stubs, very short versions. So how, how is it? Well, that's an interesting question, and we don't, I think, run any statistics around the percentage of stubs. Stubs used to be a large problem in the first period of, of development of Wikipedia, when we were mostly growing in a quantity, not quality. So then uh, it was as easy as just to write, Europe is a continent north from Africa, and it was a legitimate article, a stub, as you said. And... Now, many of those articles are much, much longer, and the threshold for, for new articles is also significantly higher. So we mostly focus on the best articles when it comes to like easily available statistics. So it's easy for me to just go to the main page of Wikipedia and Polish Wikipedia and, and see that we have almost 5,000 featured articles. And regarding the stubs, we work on expanding them. However, we have also realized that for many topics, a stub is as good as we can get. Meaning, for example, there are some musicians from the 15th century Lublin uh, about whom we know almost nothing and we simply can't write uh, about them more than just a stub. Speaking about 15th century musicians uh, that we know almost nothing about, there are people we know a lot about that are popular, but still they don't exist on Wikipedia. Mm, especially right now, the elections are coming and there are many politicians or debuting politicians who would like to be on Wikipedia and they are not. In general, what one has to do, a person or a thing, uh, some phenomenon to appear on Wikipedia, what can be on Wikipedia and what cannot be there? So in principle, we have uh, something what we call notability. So this is a characteristics of a person or a place or a no, yeah, a, um, a phenomenon, a, a notion, a, a term. Something that is popular enough to be worthy of being described uh, on Wikipedia. And each version of Wikipedia has its own standards about notability. So, for example, one of the funny things about the Polish language uh, version of Wikipedia is that we are far more tolerable for the notability of the Catholic Church and everything related to the Catholic Church. We described that area in, in more detail than an average Wikipedia. Regarding elections themselves, well, it's a bit more tricky because we have a special protocol around for election-related articles, perhaps not election-related, but rather uh, politician biographies. Biographies of politicians who would like to start in elections and uh, they would like to increase their chances by getting their articles written on Wikipedia. And we have decided that we would delete those articles without any long discussion if one of the trusted volunteers called uh, admins of Wikipedia uh, decide uh, just on their own that this politician is, well, a rising star at most, but they are not popular enough to be, again, worthy of being uh, described on Wikipedia. And in those cases, these people do a lot to get to Wikipedia to be um, to be described and we simply act as 
gatekeepers and say that, well, uh, Wikipedia is not a place for games related to elections. If I would like to be on Wikipedia, even if I deserve it, if my level of recognizability makes me deserve an article on Wikipedia, could I write it? Could I use my own experience, my knowledge about myself? You said that uh, more references there are to the sources uh, in the article, more reliable it is. As I said, the number of references is just an indicator, uh, another indicator, perhaps a bit more tricky to understand, to, to just spot uh, at first glance, is the quality of the sources themselves. Um, so there is no rule that would explicitly forbid you from describing yourself on Wikipedia, although um, it boils down to the uh, quality of sources you use and the way you use those sources. The description, the, the biography of a person should also be neutral and the sources need to be reliable themselves. So, for example, it should not be be a source that is directly related to the source, it's better for you to look for information that was not published on the internet by you or by anyone related to you. So if I was a journalist as I and I was uh, trying to get my biography written on Wikipedia, I would first of all ask some other journalists who don't work with me. Well, perhaps I, I wouldn't ask them directly, but I would look for their texts about me and then I would uh, mostly write about myself from the sources which are unrelated with me. There is one topic regarding Wikipedia, um, regarding different language versions. Uh, you said that the Russian language version is one of the most prominent, probably in the world, uh, is uh, the most prominent, the most uh, used in our region. But what is the situation of Wikipedia now in Russia? Can we still speak about Russian language Wikipedia, or is it becoming a Russian Wikipedia with Russian propaganda and how to prevent it? Yes, that's an excellent question. Well, um, Russian uh, language Wikipedia in Russia is becoming more and more Russian, but outside of Russia, it's still Russian language Wikipedia. So, for example, I know people from uh, Central Asia who believe that Russian language Wikipedia is really useful uh, because uh, in that region, uh, Russian is lingua franca and they they spend some energy just for getting the articles about Central Asia on on the Russian Wikipedia, or Russian language Wikipedia. They, they know that the number of readers who can potentially learn about uh, topics uh, about um, Central Asia is larger uh, than uh, the, the, the number of readers of um, directly, say, Uzbekistani uh, Wikipedia. But on the other hand, regarding the situation in Russia itself, as we know, Russia is working on its own internet and there are people in the Wikimedia movement who monitor that situation. And we are frankly concerned regarding the future of, of Wikipedia in Russia. Depending on the changes in law, depending on the situation related to, to war and, and politics, Wikipedia in Russia may at some point someday be banned and then we will lose people in Russia who would primarily read that language version. Up to that point, also, we have this risk, we have this, this battle for neutrality of for the Russian language version. And there are people outside of Russia, first of all, yes, uh, simple volunteers, ordinary volunteers outside of Russia, who are not physically in danger of any consequences coming from the fact that they are active on Wikipedia, so they are just free to fight with fake news and, and uh, everything related to that. And if they are in Russia, their personal situation is more complicated, perhaps it's more dangerous, I would say. And um, yeah, that, that situation is really, is really difficult and we try to deal with that, although I don't know much about that because I am personally not involved in that kind of activities. To end, would you encourage our listeners to get involved with Wikipedia, to 
maybe get involved in creation of Wikipedia, writing, editing? If someone wants to start, what should they do? Well, you might be surprised, but I think it depends. Uh, I, I don't think that everyone should be a Wikipedian. I think that everyone has a choice and the choice is I either donate for Wikipedia or I write Wikipedia. And if one doesn't have a lot of spare time and access to reliable sources, and if one doesn't find this kind of um, activity amusing or... <laughs> particularly interesting, then fine. Just donate every now and then even a small uh, sum of money because other people get books, get uh, some licenses, and uh, they may write reliable articles for everyone on the planet for free. Thank you very much. Thank you. This was The Political Periscope. The podcast is released every Thursday at 7 p.m. 